Training after 35, is it a waste of time? Are you just going to injure yourself? Are you going to make a fool of yourself? Are you thinking about beginning to get into some physical activity after the age of 35? Or maybe you're an experienced trainer and for whatever reason life's got in the way and you're thinking about picking things back up, then this is the video for you. Getting into training after 35, whether you're a beginner or you're an advanced trainer who's had a break, let's go. I've been very lucky in my time as a coach to help many people either get into training after 35 years of age or get back into training after taking a break. And I can tell you, it is one of the greatest life decisions that you can possibly make. If we think about it, we're animals in a physical world. Our physical health, our overall well-being, our quality of life is directly related to our bodies. And if we're not healthy, if we're not fit, if we're not feeling good about ourselves, if we're not staying active, things can start to go downhill very, very quickly. Number one, because we're getting that little bit older. But number two, we start to get into you know a bit of a rut where we're not doing anything physical. We fall to the level of the fitness levels that we need for our everyday existence. And thanks to mobile phones and computers and escalators and elevators and motor vehicles and airplanes, we're not in the jungle hunting our food anymore, and so our health and our fitness goes downhill very rapidly. And the last thing we want is to uh, get to an age of life where you know, we, we start to have a bit more freedom. Maybe we have some financial freedom. Uh, maybe we're established in our career. Maybe we've got a beautiful family, but we can't really enjoy a great quality of life because bending over to pick something up, it feels like our back's going to go. Or if we walk up a set of stairs, we're out of breath. So I'm here to tell you right now, training after 35 is one of the single best things that you can possibly do. Now, if I was to say uh, the two types of people that tend to uh, want to get help when it comes to their fitness programming after the age of 35. It is number one, an absolute beginner, someone who has no experience in the gym before and they just want to kick off there. They've reached a point in their life where they're like, look, I need to do this. I need to do this for myself. Or we have a very experienced trainer, maybe someone who's trained through their 20s and then things have got in the way, life's got in the way, their career, their family, whatever it might be, and they have fallen off the bandwagon and now they want to get back into it. And so they come to me looking for help. Where do we start? Where do we kick off? What do we do from here? Number one, if you're an absolute beginner, you're at a fantastic stage of your journey because you have the greatest capacity for improvements moving forward. When you are starting out, you might think, well, it's a very long road ahead and I don't know anything and I don't have any experience. But your body will ensure that you get the greatest response to the training stimulus. It's going to be it's going to be profound. It's going to be a paradigm shift. You're going to see increases in lean muscle mass. You can drop body fat. You can increase your strength. You can increase your cardiovascular fitness. If you're at the start of your journey, you have the greatest capacity for improvements moving forward. The key needs to be that you know you you don't overreach too soon. If you say, oh, look, I'm going to start a fitness program and I'm going to train five days a week and I'm going to, I'm going to be also be on top of my nutrition and I'm going to go to bed early and I'm going to give up smoking and I'm going to give up drinking. And it's great that you've got those big plans, but realistically, it might be very difficult for you to implement that successfully in the long term. So start small. It could be as simple as increasing your step count, getting into the gym and doing some exercise for the week, uh, going to the local pools and having a swim. The, the number one consideration is I want to kick off. I just want to start. Number two, I want to ensure that whatever I'm trying to achieve is something that is going to be maintainable and sustainable, and I'm going to be motivated to do it in the long term. In the long term, you are going to see the greatest results. You're going to see the greatest changes. But that doesn't take away from the fact that in the immediate short term, when you start a fitness program, you have this huge capacity to see some really profound changes. And those changes can be very motivating for you. If you are able to increase your lean muscle mass by a small margin because you, say, conduct a resistance training program, then those results may be magnified many times because also at the same time, you're dropping body fat. If you're training and you haven't been training before, you're gonna be using more energy. The recovery response from that training is gonna use even more energy as you develop lean muscle mass. And the combination of the two means that you can see a drop in body fat whilst also increasing lean muscle mass. That's known as body recomposition. And that's a fantastic, it's a fantastic goal because if you are seeing these changes, 
visually you, you notice it in the mirror you see i'm getting leaner you see that my muscle mass is increasing and so it drives motivation internally and this internal motivation can be like a flywheel it can pick up very quickly and before you know it you can really uh, look to yourself for your own inspiration because you see the results you see the changes you see the progression in the gym things happen very fast for a beginner and that's why being a beginner can be one of the best uh, positions on your fitness journey even though you mightn't think so because of this huge capacity for improvements in the future and we're not talking about years in the future we're talking about in weeks and months time you can see some significant changes so while it may be overwhelming for someone to think about exercising for the first time once they're over 35 you're in a fantastic spot where you can see huge changes in a very short period of time Next up, we've got the previously trained individual. Maybe you were very active as a, as a child, as a teenager, maybe you're in your 20s, but then life gets in the way. You know, your career, your family, time management goes downhill. There may be other life events that have gotten in the way. You've had, an, you've had a decent break from training. You haven't been training for a number of years. Well, it's an exciting point to be on your journey, just like a beginner, because you have a phenomenal ability to see huge changes in a short period of time with your overall fitness levels, in particular when it comes to increasing lean muscle mass and increasing strength, thanks to the phenomena known as muscle memory. I did a video about this last week and I'll put a link in the description below so you can check it out. But thanks to muscle memory, you have a crazy ability to get back to a level of strength and muscle mass that you were previously at in a, in a pretty short time. Like it is, it is pretty freaky. When I see people coming back to the gym after taking a big break and they get back into some consistent training, the results are, are amazing. I mean, I have heard that they can be compared to someone who's running a cycle of performance enhancing drugs in the short term. You can see phenomenal changes. But what's one catch for some of those individuals? We don't wanna get injured. We don't wanna go out of the gate too hard. People uh, who have trained previously and, and they sort of want to get back into things, they might be thinking back, you know, 10 years ago in the gym, I was doing this bench press, I was doing this squat, and they're very motivated and they want to get back there very quickly, and maybe they don't use an appropriate amount of loading or an appropriate amount of training frequency, and we can see injuries rear their ugly head very quickly. We can see people uh, overreach, overshoot too fast, they get some injuries, they, they lose their motivation and they drop off very quickly. So one of the key considerations for a previously trained individual who wants to get back into training, especially after the age of 35, is to take it easy. It's just to moderate their excitement and their enthusiasm just by a small margin because there is nothing that will derail the process uh, more than an injury early on when you are trying to mount a comeback. But you should take some peace in the knowledge that if you are able to consistently apply yourself, you will see phenomenal results. You'll see quick increases in muscle protein synthesis. You'll see quick increases in your neural drive, so your strength. You'll see quick increases in your muscle glycogen stores. So you'll see a quick increase in your muscle fullness. So the results happen very quickly. Now that does use a lot of energy as well. And so if you are controlling your nutrition at the same time, you can quite easily push yourself into a calorie deficit because your training intensity is picking up, all of this lean tissue is coming back, and that can certainly mean that your total daily energy expenditure increases quite rapidly. And like a beginner, if you are increasing your lean muscle mass and you're dropping body fat at the same time, it is very, very motivating. I mean, if you're going to the gym on a regular basis and you can see the changes and you, you're feeling strong and you're feeling good about yourself and you're getting some confidence back, it can be very motivating and it can really mean that that internal mo motivation can be the driving factor very, very quickly. But the number one consideration for a previously trained individual getting back into the gym, take it easy. We don't want any injuries. And even though you may have lifted a certain amount in a, in a particular exercise, it doesn't mean you're going to get back there overnight. And we just want to slowly stage things up to avoid any chances of injury. So whether you are an absolute beginner or you're an advanced trainer who took a break and you're looking to get back into things, what are the first steps? Look, if you're over 35, I would highly recommend going to your GP, going to your local doctor, getting a medical clearance, just to make sure there's no obvious underlying health concerns that need to be addressed before you start your exercise program. Think about it. Would there be anything more disappointing than 
getting into some training for a month or two, and then finding out there's some medical concern that could have previously been addressed before you started the program, it'd, it'd be terrible for motivation. It really would be, and it's hard to then get motivated to get back into things. So going to a GP, getting a medical clearance, that should be a number one port of call. If you don't have any experience in the gym, I highly recommend looking for a great personal trainer in your area. Someone that has a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge, comes highly recommended. Maybe you have some friends who train, they could recommend someone. You can find someone online. You do need to be mindful when looking for a personal trainer. Take a look at their experience, their qualifications, their track record. And a personal trainer for a beginner can be a fantastic tool to help you overcome that initial learning phase without making as many mistakes. It reduces the chances of injury. And hopefully they provide a training program that is suited for your unique circumstances right now. Now, if you are an experienced trainer who is getting back into the gym after taking a break, then you really wanna take a mindful approach to the intensity and the frequency of the training that you're trying to complete. There's no point going back into the gym and aiming for five or six days of training because you're gonna get injured, you're gonna lose motivation, you might uh, you know, find that your immune system's compromised and you're getting sick on a frequent basis. So you really wanna moderate your return to training. And that could mean that I'm only gonna go back to the gym a few days a week. I'm not going to push my uh, sets to failure point. I'm gonna use less weight per repetition. I'm just gonna start going through the motions so that I can get back into a regular routine. So for an experienced trainer who's looking to get back into their training, I really advise you just to take it easy. Don't live off in fantasy land where you're thinking about all those lifts that you did in the gym all those years ago. You can get back there, there is no doubt about it, but you really want to moderate the intensity and the frequency of the training to prevent burnout, loss of motivation, injury, and also you can keep your immune system compromised. And you know, there's nothing worse than being motivated to train and you're getting sick or you're getting injured and it just makes the whole process a lot more difficult than it needs to be. And it will probably mean there's a much higher chance that you won't be successful. So my two tips would be, number one, get a medical clearance from your GP. And number two, if you don't have experience in the gym, consider a personal trainer, a good personal trainer. Or if you do have experience training, just take it easy, moderate yourself, don't push too hard too soon. If you want to know all about one of the most tried and tested sports supplements out there, perfect for beginners, perfect for uh, advanced trainers who have taken a break and they're getting back into things, check out my video up here on creatine monohydrate. It is one of the most tried and tested supplements out there. It's relatively cheap and it is extremely effective. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and I'll talk to you soon.